I'm trying to fly really very very low and having the trimmers closed completely so I'm flying as slow as it is like as slow as possible and I think it's about 30 kph so this is I guess as slow as it gets maybe 28 or something or 30 it's the all obviously depends on where the wind is coming from it's here so if anything were to happen I can instantly kill it so what I'm doing is holding on to the frame it doesn't matter where as long as I'm not in reach of this propeller here I'm gonna go ahead and give it a couple tugs here and it should start up but keep in mind I always have my hand or a finger on this kill switch clear prop That's a pro. That I use, I don't know if many people know about it, but it's called the Venture Case. And the Insta360 goes into the Venture Case. And what I'm going to try to do tonight is try to attach this to the snap and uh, see how that looks so we can get a really cool view not just a straight down shot but really any direction that i choose I'm being very cautious because I have a tendency to hit this kill switch on this throttle. This throttle is a short-lived throttle for me. It's had multiple problems and it fits in certain ways, but the actuator on it, the handle on it, it's far too long. Um, Trimming it down, I don't know if I'd even like the angle then of the V. It just might be a little too severe. Um, and then the kill switch is just sitting right on top, wide in the open, and it only needs it only needs a heartbeat. It's not like my Polini, you, you pushed it, and you could hold it for a second, let go, and your motor would kind of cough and restart. Coming back did a nice fly over my brother Casey and he was so overpowered by the majesty of this paramotor that that sucker fell flat out his seat taking this video. I wish I had the audio for that. You can hear him grunting and laughing. Anybody get the license of that paramotor? I spent about a full 20 seconds you see here getting ready for this one. And I really committed to it. So some things Woody pointed out. He points out a lot more than I'm about to say, but I could have let up on the brakes a little bit. Do you know why they are zigzag like they are? This was done by Napoleon in Napoleon's year. So I don't even know that. And Napoleon did these zigzags. This is all hand up, by the way. Uh, he did these zigzags so that you could attack an enemy in the corner and hide in these corners. It's a strategic war pattern. How do you do it, Anthony Bella? How do you get such pretty pictures with that West Texas freaking dust everywhere? And I know it's dusty where you're at, brother. Oh, he's going for the mythical, legendary Amarillo forward launch. close to the LZ in case the engine doesn't start, right?
but with the clouds being so low um, those thermals are very weak they're not nothing but they are they are quite weak and to be honest I was quite surprised uh, well how pleasant it was it was more sort of rolling sort of lift up and down up and down rather than being banged and thrown about there was no calm spots it was constant just lifting and dropping but not too severe so yesterday i did this little i'll call it like a mini cross country i've never done a cross country ever and this is about 10 miles so for me especially doing it alone it is a cross country so i will have to go pick up my car by the time i land whenever that is but um it's pretty cool getting to see some new spaces. I never knew some of these places that are right by my uh, house exist. I found a baseball field I could potentially launch from and a couple of quarries. Pretty interesting. Let's start out with number one. On my list of accessories that may save your life in the paramotoring world, this one may seem extraordinarily obvious, but believe it or not, some people just don't use it. And that's a helmet, what I've got on my head right now. Believe it or not, I've heard people use the argument that, well, you're flying a paramotor. If you fall from 2,000 feet, a helmet's not gonna save you. And it's about the stupidest argument I've ever heard. Of course a helmet's not gonna save you if you fall from 2,000 feet. exactly does this one weigh? This one here with the Atom 80 is weighing it dry weight with no fuel is weighing in at 47.7 pounds. 47 pounds, 47.7. So guys, you can figure about four, maybe five pounds for a uh, side mount reserve or a belly mount reserve. And uh, I believe it's six, yeah, it's six pounds per gallon for fuel. For fuel, yes. So uh, somewhere in around 3.8 gallons is gonna be six pounds. So six gallons is gonna be roughly about nine pounds. Um.
So today I'm talking about the rigidity of the frame. This is the V3 Kestrel frame from Blackhawk. I've had two other Blackhawks and this one by far is amazing. Mike Robinson, Mike Gambrell did an awesome job. It's a teardrop shaped frame. So you get a lot of strength plus that aerodynamic design from that teardrop. Not very big, is it? But then we don't want big, do we? And we don't want heavy. That's the last thing we want. In the aviation world, lightweight and small is what it's all about. So look at that. Bloody marvelous. I don't know if you should be thermaling on a trike, but hey, what the hell? We did it anyways, and the next portion is us getting up to the mountain and using thermals to increase our climb rate. And I managed to get up to 7,000 feet and Troy just below that. So enjoy the ride, guys. Hope you're having fun. They've been working on this, it seems like, a few years now getting the data center up and they're gonna continue to grow and grow and build. Facebook. Thumbs up. Thumbs up, like. <laughs> it's a like. Do you like me? <laughs> Careful, they'll block you. <laughs> <laughs> I know. So here we are at the secret hidden yes. data center. <laughs> the bunker, the bunker. Facebook bunker. <laughs> Facebook bunker. How can I save money on an emergency parachute? Well, let's first say that I think stupid questions do not exist, only stupid answers. Um, but this question, it comes quite close to being a stupid question, actually. That's not a, that's a buck. It's hard to see from this angle. Oh yeah, holy crap. That's a bit, that's a shooter right there. That is a nice deer. That's a massive deer right there. Holy smokes. Got a little bit more, it's got a little bit more roll rate. Still got that single skin feel though. Alright, so I'm gonna come in and do a power off landing. And we're gonna see if this thing does just any better. I'm trying to do it so that I can get it on camera here. seem too happy about us being here. I thought happen, we left right Vietnam, man. We're next door. <laughs> if you go up, they're gonna shoot you down. That's okay. what he just said? That's what he just said? Yeah. Okay, we're leaving. We're okay, leaving we don't want to. No problem. <laughs> we, we go. <laughs>
<laughs> oh man, it's wet. <laughs> it is wet. Yeah, it's just wet. house or uh, building up here and then we're gonna follow those fields back towards the sunset hopefully we make it in time